I'm joined by Caitlin Huey Burns of Real Clear Politics and Roll Call columnist John Allen in Washington. Okay, John, I want to get to you with these rigged election comments. Is this enough for to be able to bury the stories about him not willing to accept the election results? I don't think so. This is a scripted speech that he's giving the day after he had an opportunity in a debate uh, where millions of people were watching to uh, back away from the idea that the election is rigged before it even happens. Uh, Martin O'Malley, the former governor of Maryland who ran uh, briefly for president uh, this time around, just called him a stratospheric putz uh, in reaction to those comments. Uh, so I, I don't think this is going away. Democrats are going to push the case. And look, he said he'll accept the results. If he wins, it's conditional on that. Right. And, you know, early voting has started in 22 states. More than 2 million votes have already been cast. Do you think one party does better than the other when it comes to early voters? Well, we're seeing a real uh, increase in the, uh, uh, the efficacy of uh, Democrats over the last several years, particularly with, you know, it used to be just absentee ballots. Now you've got early voting, uh, you know, in many states across the country where uh, it's not just because of absentee issues, but just basically as part of the law that you can vote early. Uh, and we're seeing Democrats make huge strides in that. And I think, you know, over the course of time, uh, uh, you'll probably see some balance. Caitlin, you're saying that this is a difficulty for early voting with, on the Democratic side. How much of a liability is that for the Trump campaign? Well, uh, the Trump campaign has not really made an effort to encourage people to vote early. Um, the Clinton campaign has been very strategic about how they've been trying to get people to the polls. A good example was in Iowa a couple weeks ago, the day early voting started in that state, Clinton held a rally and encouraged people to go directly afterwards down the street to vote in person early. Uh, they've seen, to Jonathan's point, that as a, a, a good way to capture the enthusiasm of the moment and make sure that's registered uh, in in the polls. Um, Trump has really not talked that much about early voting. He's talked a lot about November 8th. Um, they have not really pushed in states where early voting is coming is, is coming or has been going on, uh, the, encouraging supporters to do that. So they haven't been taking advantage of some of those, those uh, opportunities. You know, during last night's debate, one of the top trending topics on social media was the moment that Trump called Clinton a nasty woman. And now, apparently, that streams from Spotify have gone up 250% of one particular music video. I've got to play this one for you guys today. I, Social Security payroll contribution will go up, as will Donald's, assuming he can't figure out how to get out of it. Uh, but what we want to do is to replenish the Social Such a Security nasty Trust woman. Fund. I was hoping to play Janet Jackson's Nasty. <laughs> that, that was a little was, different. Th that was not the nasty I was referring to when I called for that video. <laughs> I want to ask you, though, Caitlin, do you think this hurts female viewer, voters? Yeah, I think I think it does. I think it's overall the approach that Donald Trump has taken over the course of the campaign, but also in this moment where he is, um, you know, he, he has ways to prosecute her and had, in the beginning at least, um, really brought cases against her regarding the foundation, regarding foreign policy and other issues. Um, but then he goes into the, these um, moments where he seems uh, especially condescending. I mean, this has been a nasty campaign. Uh, both candidates have been engaged in, uh, you know, criticizing one another and so forth in ways that we haven't really seen before. Uh, but this just speaks to at a time that he is trying to expand his support, not trying, he's not trying, uh, but, but in a time he needs to to expand his support. Uh, I think this just, you know, doesn't help him. Mm. I want to ask you, John, about these WikiLeaks. Both Trump and Clinton are attending an event tonight. It, it's here um, at the, with the Archbishop of New York, Cardinal Tim Dolan, will be there. And he's called on Clinton to apologize after hacked emails. WikiLeaks showed her campaign issuing pretty much insulting remarks about Catholics. How do you see that playing out tonight? I think it, uh, it behooves Hillary Clinton to uh, to apologize for that. Um, you know, I think uh, in most of the emails, at least the ones I've seen, you're talking about members of her campaign who are Catholic, and it looks like uh, they're arguing basically that uh, Republicans who are Catholic don't really believe it. Uh, I think that's, um, you know, certainly offensive to those who do believe, uh, and I imagine that's the vast majority, if not the entirety, of uh, Republican Catholics uh, who subscribe to the faith. So, you know, I think, I think it's something that's offensive. It shouldn't have come out. The Russians shouldn't be uh, hacking into us. WikiLeaks shouldn't be publishing private emails. Uh, all that said, it's out there now, and uh, I think it's incumbent on Hillary Clinton to make clear uh, that she doesn't condone that kind of talk about people's religious faith. 
Caitlin, I'm curious about the evangelical vote as well. When you talk, look mm -hmm. into religious groups, where is that turning? Have we seen any shift throughout this election cycle? Well, it's such an interesting question because uh, throughout the, the, the past couple of weeks, when Donald Trump has made several stumbles, when the accusations continue to pile up against him involving sexual harassment claims, uh, evangelical leaders have stood by him. And there are a couple different reasons why. And we saw uh, a glimpse of that in the debate last night. One was when uh, he talked about the Supreme Court. That is pretty much one of the only things things uh, binding uh, conservatives who are with him to him at this point. And the other um, is the idea abortion was brought up in, in the, the debate last night. And you can talk about the, the differences between the two candidates and the differences of where Donald Trump is now to where he has been in the past. Uh, but that is also something that uh, conservative evangelicals believe uh, that they, they see potential in his campaign and that's why they're sticking by him. We see what a force they were for George W. Bush in that campaign year. Can we expect the same turnout for Trump? I, I think that's a great question. We've seen uh, the support in the polling, but we haven't. Uh, they've, they've, they've also been kind of slow to come around. I remember covering a big uh, evangelical meeting here in New York a few months ago when Trump was trying to get the support of the big leaders, and they had not at that point uh, been ready to endorse him. Now, many of them have, but it's not the same kind of enthusiasm that we've seen for other uh, candidates. And so that really matters in terms of uh, getting out the vote on the ground. Uh, point to a state like Iowa. I mean, Trump is already doing well in Iowa where uh, a bulk of Republican voters are considered evangelical, uh, but he's doing well in that state mostly because of the demographics. Mm. Um, it's really one of the only battleground states right now that he's ahead in. Ohio is also very close and there are some polls showing him ahead there too. Caitlin Huey-Burns and John Allen, thank you both for joining us. Take care, Rena.